the flag they carried was found in the rubble of Ground Zero and had flown atop the World Trade Center in New York when the buildings were attacked on September 11th, 2001. Oh, wow. That flag oh. was under the... Okay, that's so beautiful. What's up, my friend? Today I'll be reacting to Top 10 Most Patriotic Moments in Sports History. This should be a fascinating one. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like, thank you so much, my friend. This is the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. You guys end up recommending this one a lot. Let's play it. Sporting events are always going to be a central part of the American experience. In the fall, Americans tune in to watch their favorite sports, be it the NFL, MLB, NHL, and even the NBA. Every two years, we come together as a nation to support Team USA in the Winter or Summer uh, Olympics. Yeah, you know what, my friends? I have to pause it right, right away. But I admire this so much about Americans, you know, because you guys can support a lot of different sports. And uh, that's fascinating. In my country, it's soccer. That's it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not just, let's say 90% of the people just care about that. The other sports are very minimal. But um, even though I believe NFL is the biggest uh, league. Uh, the American football is by far the biggest sport. Uh, baseball is still very popular, right? Uh, basketball is still very popular. I really admire that about um, about America. Even sometimes come together to watch the United States compete in World Cup play. It's happened. From the yellow ribbon tied around the Superdome during Super Bowl 15 to remember hostages taken in Iran, to chance of Whoa. USA, USA, when a crowd in Philadelphia learned about the death of Osama bin Laden. American sports fans and players wear their American hearts on their sleeves. So let's check out the top 10 most okay, patriotic this will be a good one. sports history. Number 10. Team USA carries the World Trade Center flag to the Olympics. Rarely Oof. does a flag presentation at the Olympic Games happen to a quiet crowd. But as eight members of Team USA, flanked by members of the New York Police Department and New York Fire Department, marched the flag of the host country into the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, you could hear a pin drop. The flag they carried was found in the rubble of Ground Zero and had flown atop the World Trade Center in New York when the buildings were attacked on September 11th, 2001. Oh, wow. That flag oh. was under the... Okay, that's so beautiful. Oh, wow, and the flag was... Uh... Oh... Okay, that's uh, that's really. Oh, that was a special moment for sure. Do you guys remember that the that specific moment? Then, then she is uh, telling us the debris for three days before being found and given to the National Guard. Oh. It took some time to convince the International Olympic Committee, who is responsible for keeping politics out of the games, to approve the display of the torn and tattered banner. Ooh. That's, but on opening that's night, powerful. The World Trade Center's old glory flew proudly once more. Number nine, Ruling Gardner defeats the undefeated. For a decade, Alexander Karelin was the world's dominant super heavyweight wrestler. By the time, uh, my friends, I have one question about wrestling. So this is a amateur wrestling, right? The 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 very famous one is the WWE stuff. That's professional, I believe. Is this popular in America, the the wrestling stuff? Because I, I believe this is a huge thing in, uh, in college, right? 2000 Olympics rolls around. Karelin, a.k.a. the Russian... Actually, I'm sorry, let's run it back. For a decade, Alexander Karelin was the world's dominant super heavyweight wrestler. By the hmm. time the 2000 Olympics rolled around, Karelin, a.k.a. the Russian Bear, a.k.a. Alexander the Great, hadn't been defeated in a match since Russia was still called the Soviet Union. Oh, and even oh. then, that was his only loss. Until he faced off with a dairy farmer from Wyoming. In six years, Karelin hadn't even given up a single point to an opponent. His American opponent, Rulin Gardner, hadn't placed higher than fifth in the world up until this point. And even lost to Corellin five to nothing before. But Corellin lost his grip and a point to Gardner in the second period. Number eight, Mary Lou Retton wins a gymnastic first. A little girl from West Virginia dealt a stunning blow to the Eastern Bloc during the Cold War when Mary Lou Retton brought home Olympic gold in 1984. Before Retton, Team USA was never able to wrest Olympic gold from the Eastern Europe in the individual all around gymnastics event. 
She came into the event trailing Romania's Ekaterina Zabo, and she even had undergone a knee operation just five weeks before competing. In Retton's own words, she believes her performance showed that American-born and trained athletes can do anything, no matter what the odds are. Oh, that's a crazy one. Okay. <laughs> Wow, the, I, I mean, I'm enjoying this top 10 quite a lot, I have to say it. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> 1999 Women's World Cup Final The 1999 Women's World Cup came down to a shootout tiebreaker against the Chinese. With the score tied 0-0 zero zero in extra time, the US team would end up winning based on penalties. It wasn't so much the gameplay that mattered, it was the draw. With 90,000 spectators, oh. it was the largest turnout for a Holy! Did you guys saw the stadium? 90,000. Oh, wow. Okay. Spectators, it was the largest turnout for a women's sporting event ever. The last thing oh, that's amazing. the US win would be Brandi Chastain's post penalty kick celebration of the victory, where she fell to her knees and took off her jersey, revealing oh. a sports bra seen around the world. That image became one of Sports Illustrated's most iconic covers ever. Oh, that's amazing. Six, Joe Lewis knocks out a Nazi. What? In 1938, Hitler was still touting the Germans as a master race, while Germany... Okay, am I great? This top 10 is getting... Um, oh, okay. <laughs> now we are knocking out a, a Nazi? Oh, that's crazy. Athletes competed the world over for top honors. On June 22nd, Max Schmeling met American champion, the Brown Bomber Joe Lewis. The first time the two met in 1936, Schmeling took advantage of a moment when Lewis dropped his left hand after a jab, allowing Schmeling to give Lewis his first loss in the 12th round of that fight. That would not happen again. With the world listening via radio and more than 70,000 watching in Yankee Stadium, Lewis unloaded on Schmeling, knocking him down. 70,000? Wait, this bo is box really Th this popular? Was this popular? Three times in just Whoa. two minutes. Schmeling was only able to throw two punches in the whole one round match. Number five, the champ lights the Olympic torch. Oh, Muhammad the Ali. At the end of the torch relay is an honor reserved for a legendary Olympic athlete from the host country. Does it get more legendary than the greatest Muhammad Ali? I think that the two, you guys may disagree, but this is my perspective as a European. The two most famous, um, you know, athletes from America ever, ever. Right now, maybe Tom Brady and stuff like that. But I think it's Muhammad Ali and uh, Michael Jordan. Would you guys agree with that? I think Mike Tyson is also really close. Mike Tyson is really close, too, to be honest. Mike Tyson is, is an icon, for sure. But I believe, you know, people call them the GOATs, right? I think Mohamed Ali and Michael Jordan, those are the, the best of the best. Would, would you guys agree with that? I don't know. I, I, I watched a couple of documentaries about Mohamed Ali. His story is fascinating, really. Except in 1996, the identity of the one who would light the flame was a close-kept secret. Even swimmer Janet Evans, who was handing the torch off, didn't know to whom she was handing it. Ali was stricken with Parkinson's disease and had long since retired by this point. When Ali emerged to take the Olympic torch and light the flame, the oh, sound in Atlanta was I less never a saw these. of applause and more of the collective gasp of elated surprise as the once great boxer, shaking, lit the torch. Oh, that's amazing. Number four, Rick Monday saves the flag. Remember the MLB outfielder Rick Monday? He might be before most of our audience's time, but Monday was with the Los Angeles Dodgers 1981 World Series winning team. I, I don't know about him, but let's see. Before that, he was the top prospect in the 1965 Major League Baseball draft. Somewhere in between, he saved old glory from public degradation. In 1976, Monday was with the Chicago Cubs, visiting the Dodgers. With okay. Monday in center field during the fourth inning, two protesters jumped the outfield fence and tried to burn a flag on live television. What? Monday, seeing what was about to transpire, ran over and snatched the live He should field. also kick them. Why? I mean, come on, that's the ultimate disrespect. It soaked flag. The protesters were arrested, and Monday was able to keep the flag. 
Ever since that day, Amazing. Amanda used the actual flag to raise money for military families. Number three, Ooh. the president's post 9-11 opening pitch. It might be hard to imagine the leader of the free world facing a new global war on terrorism being psyched. Okay, I think this question is, is, is related to politics, but I think um, is not a controversial one. How do you guys feel about George Bush? Because uh, I remember at the time, uh, specific here in Europe, uh, there was a lot of critics about him. I, I wonder how you guys see it uh, right now, uh, you know, after so many years. Do you guys think he was a good president or, uh, or not? I ask a lot of questions, I know my friends, but, um, you know, learning is so fascinating. My friend, quick pause on this one. First of all, hope you are enjoying the video. If that's the case, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe. But let me share with you one thing. I have a Patreon community where I put content almost every day, a lot of early assess videos. So if you want to get uh, them, go to my Patreon, link on my description. And this is, of course, a good way to support the channel. That said, let's continue with this one. And I hope you have fun. ...out by throwing the first pitch in Yankee Stadium. But okay. in his own words, he absolutely was. Thousands of New Yorkers came to the stadium to watch President George W. Bush throw the pitch to open Game 3 of the 2001 World Series. It was also just weeks after 9-11. He didn't want Americans to think the president was incapable of finding the plate. But as he practiced, Yankee Derek Jeter told him that he needed to both throw from the mound and not in front as originally planned, and not bounce it. They'll boo you, he told the president. Bush, shaken but loose, walked onto the field and threw a strike to an eruption of applause. That was decent, uh, no. Number two, the Buckeye bullet burns Hitler. Before he ever arrived in Berlin for the 1936 Olympic Games, Jesse Owens had already set three world records and tied another. At Ohio State, he won eight individual NCAA championships, which was a record in its own right. When Whoa. he arrived in Berlin, he knew Nazi Germany was using the games as a showcase for its racial policies. Holy. He was determined to compete anyway. Owens went on to win four gold medals in 19. Let's go! An unrivaled achievement until some 50 years later when Carl Lewis did the same in 1984. Oh, okay, but did not do it uh, in front of Hitler. <laughs> you know, so let's go! Oh, so this is Owens. Okay. Oh, this, this, this was a, historical, a historic moment for sure. When gold in the long jump, the Olympic Committee told Hitler he had to greet all the winners or none at all. Hitler opted for none. As Owens won Lose the it. event, Hitler would leave early. <laughs> yeah, yeah go, go out. Speer would later write that Hitler was, quote, highly annoyed by the series of triumphs by the marvelous... You, sh you should be. Jesse Owens. Because that guy was amazing. Quote. Number one, the miracle on ice. Would you bet money on a bunch of college amateurs taking on the world's greatest hockey team in a competition for Olympic gold? No. Not many would, and not many did, as it turns out. That was the situation Team USA faced in the 1980 Winter Olympics. It was a tough time for the United States. With hostages in Iran, an energy crisis, and runaway inflation, it looked like the American dream was coming to an end. But no words echoed through the ages like Al Michaels' Do you believe in miracles? As Team USA topped the Soviet Union four to three in one of the best. Wow! Even on oh, Americans, <laughs> I love you, my friends. Even on okay, you guys are good at hockey, I, I guess, right? I mean, this was a big upset, but maybe you guys are are good now, after this one. Biggest upsets in sports history. Oh wow! That's our list. We hope it made you as proud as it made oh, us. Oh, I Give love it. Tell us your I'm proud. patriotic moments in sports history. I'm proud of, uh, you know, I'm not American, but I kind, kind of am at this point. You know, you know what, my friends, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, leave a like if you also thought this was an amazing, uh, amazing top 10 because, wow. And that's it for today, my friends. Hope you end up enjoying this video. If that's the case, do not forget to leave a like. Also, consider to subscribe if you are new to my channel. And also, let me remember you about one thing. I have a Patreon community. I put videos there a bit earlier than I put on YouTube. So if you want to support me and have access to early content, go to my uh, Patreon. I will leave a link on my description. Take a look at that. You can also scan the QR code you'll be seeing here. And uh, that's it.